So endocrine disrupting chemicals are synthetic chemicals that disrupt the hormones in our body, uh, which are crucial for a broad array of physiologic functions. Everything from how our brain develops to how we maintain a, a good balance of body fat, preventing diabetes, to um, basic uh, reproductive functions. We find these chemicals all across our daily lives, in our electronics, in furniture. They're used in the linings of aluminum cans. One of the early lessons from our European work was that policy predicts exposure. And insofar as chemicals are more heavily regulated, we identified much lower contributions to disease and disability. And in Europe and the United States, there are fundamentally different policy rules and regulations at play. We found that the costs of endocrine disrupting chemical exposures in the United States are on the order of $340 billion annually. That corresponds to 2.3% of the US GDP. What's most striking is the differences in the contribution uh, to those costs. Those are higher as a proportion of population between the U.S. and Europe. Clearly the U.S. suffers a greater burden, but what's equally striking is the sources of these impacts on the U.S. population. In contrast to Europe where the costs of flame retardant chemicals and their impact on the developing brains of children are much lower, in the United States we identified over $260 billion in lost economic productivity and intellectual disability cost due to these flame retardants alone. And that's an annual cost insofar as the U.S. population of children born each year remains exposed at a very high level compared to Europe to these chemicals. So there are safe and simple steps that we can take to reduce our exposure to the most harmful EDCs. We can reduce our level of phthalate and bisphenol A exposure by avoiding microwaving plastic, looking at the recycling number on the bottom of, of plastic containers, avoiding the numbers three, six, and seven. If plastic is obviously etched or scratched, it's a good time to throw it away. And canned food consumption is the most straightforward route to uh, getting exposure to bisphenol A uh, through contact with uh, food's contact surfaces. That, and ultimately, that's how that chemical gets into people's bodies. In addition, we can eat organic and we can simply ventilate our homes. There are chemical dusts, these flame retardant and other chemicals dusts that are highly persistent can reside in our home for, homes for years or months and accumulate due to the use in furniture, electronics, and other products. And insofar as we simply open up our windows every couple of days, that allows for those chemical dust to be flushed out into the broader external air environment. There is opportunity to continue testing these chemicals in a more proactive basis uh, through peer-reviewed research as, as well as other uh, data inputs. Uh, but most importantly, we need a, uh, a, an infrastructure for the Environmental Protection Agency to really take this updated law on and really screen chemicals for their safety uh, and ensure that our hormones are protected as well as other organ systems in our bodies.